Hey folks, welcome back to uh, building a nested uh, lab with Workstation 17. Uh, this is part four. We're doing those domain services on Windows 2022 server. Uh, we're actually in part B now. We've completed part A and moving into part B, we're going to complete NTP, uh, DHCP and RAS on that server to wrap up uh, this particular uh, part. And let's go ahead and let it roll. Next thing we want to do is we want to establish the uh, server this AD server as um, the authoritative time server or NTP setup. So let's go into services. Okay. What we want to do is go down to Microsoft time. Where are you at there, bud? Excuse me. Windows time. Now you don't have to use uh, your server for an NTP server. You can use another resource if you want, but I prefer to use it because it's there. <laughs> it's already ready to go. So it's set to automatic, right? So we, it's already started and running. So that's good that it's all operational. Now what we need to do is go into the registry and uh, make sure it's authoritative, that it knows that it is the time source and not looking to other machines. Okay, so this is the process we're gonna follow. We're going to regedit. We're going to open as administrator. Okay. Then we're going to navigate down to this particular area. So H key uh, local machine. Then uh, system is next. Uh, current control set right there. Uh, by services. Windows 32 time or W32 time. Where are we at here? There it is. And then into uh, config. Now what we're looking for is the local clock dispersion. Okay, this guy here. It thinks it's ten on the list. We need to make it numero uno or zero. All right. Click OK. Reboot the host. All right, we've knocked out AD, DNS, and now time. I'm gonna go ahead and add the uh, Active Directory. Oh, there it was. Users and computers, and we're gonna put this on the taskbar. Okay, let's just launch it, make sure we're working. There's nested local, computers, there's users. We're ready to go, okay? Don't need a complex uh, setup for nested right we just need a active directory controller if we need to do authentication we need a dns server which is here to do uh, forward and reverse lookups when we're ready you might want to go in here and start populating your names like uh, esa 101 and the names uh, that's as simple as just coming in here and saying you know new host uh, esa 101 uh, give it its ip address 10. 101 I might also add in VCSA 223. And I might as well add the other ones in too. You're going to want to have these set up before you actually do your installs. Uh, that way uh, DNS is up and operational uh, and you're good to go. So one more here. I think we've got the whole peanut gallery. And they're done. So there's all the hosts we're going to need uh, as they're coming up right now. We're on AD222. We'll be doing VCSA223 uh, pretty soon and get it going. DNS is uh, ready to go. So now let's get uh, DHCP going. So for that, we're going to, of course, add a role. Right, sorry about that. Uh, next, that server. Okay, we want to do a DHCP server. Let's add features that it needs. Next, okay, restart if needed. Yep, install. Let it go through its process. All right, let's hit close. DHCP is now up.
Let's find DHCP. Okay, add it to our taskbar. And let's go into it. All right, so let's create our new scope. Okay, start address. And we'll go to uh, 10.0.10.0. .10 99. Now, uh, this is something you're going to want to update in your um, IP tracker. So you're keeping track of these things like your IP addresses, DNS names, and also your DHCP range. Let's put our subnet. Okay, next. These would be any exclusions if you want to uh, put those in there. We don't need any. Okay, our lease. Uh, probably two days is more than enough for what we're doing. Okay, configure options, absolutely. So our router, what's our router gonna be? That's gonna be our RAS server, which is our domain controller. Okay, we're gonna add that in for now. Even though it's not set up, that's fine. Okay, parent domain is right. Okay, DNS server is 222, which is local, that's the one we want. Okay, we don't need to worry about wins. Create and activate this scope, absolutely. Okay, so now all we need to do is authorize it. Okay, so we're going to authorize the uh, actual server to do this. Quick refresh, and there you can see it's ready to go. So I'm going to uh, disable, or see if we can disable uh, IP6. Don't really need it. All right, let's not worry about IPv6 right now. <clears throat> no big deal. Let's just take a quick look at four. Uh, we look at our um, different options uh, in the scope, sorry, scope options. We can see we've got our router, DNS servers, things like that. We can add more here if we wanted to. Uh, if we want to come through here and pick out other things like uh, the uh, time server would probably be a great one to put in. So let's put that in. Okay, done. And we can add other options uh, as we needed. But for now, those should be the basics. Give it a router, a time server, DNS, uh, and a DNS uh, domain name. We're good to go with uh, DHCP for now. Okay, DHCP should be ready to go. So let's move on to setting up a RAS service. So the first thing we need to do is go into the uh, network editor, virtual network editor in Workstation, and actually set up uh, a bridge network. Now I've already done this step here. And if you might notice sometimes when you go into the virtual network editor, the networks don't look quite right. Like this address doesn't look right to me. But as soon as you click on change settings, okay, it actually corrects itself so that you are able to see them. Okay, there it is right there. So now you can see it's a bridge network ready to go. So what you want to do is you want to come in here and you'll say add network, choose the VMnet uh, number that you want. In my case, I chose uh, zero. Um, once I chose that and choose OK, then I just modify the settings. So I chose this, I chose bridge network, and then I have to choose the right correct network adapter that is going out to my 80 network. In this case, that's the network connection 3, the I-219. Uh, so you might ask yourself, well, how did I know that, <laughs> right? Uh, I knew that because that's where this command comes in handy. So there it is. You can see there's the network right there. This is the one I'm targeting. Uh, to go ahead and get it operational. So let's just do a quick network check. I'm sure we're working fine, but let's just do a ping to this number. Okay, and that's the uh, gateway. So we know the local PC is uh, operational and able to talk on the AD network. So that means our VM should be able to work when we bridge it. Now let's add a network adapter. Add. And we're gonna go down to network card where you at there. We're going to choose custom and we want zero because that's the network. This is the 80 network. This is the 10 network. OK, 
Okay, it's ready to roll. So now let's go in and edit the network information. Now we're setting this up per the network diagram that we wrote earlier and completed. We're gonna put this as 222. Two, two. Okay, it does have a gateway. And it's the same for the DNS. That's how my setup works. Yours may vary, of course, right? Uh, but you know, there is a gateway here, but there isn't on the 10 network. Uh, the 10 work network's not needed uh, because there are no routes there. It's just a, a, you know, basically one subnet. So let's choose OK. Invalid subnet mask. Ah, little typo. Let's rename it so we know what it is. Done, 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 almost done. Go to command prompt. Let's make sure we can ping out. Bingo, we can get there. Now, uh, we should also be able to get out to the internet at this point. Okay. Just thinking about it. There it is. So we're getting out to the internet. That's what we're looking to accomplish to make sure those checks are done first. We can get to the 10 network. We can get to the 80 network. We're good to go. Now we're ready to start with uh, RAS. All right, so we'll go down here and type in server manager. And now we can add our role to this server. Okay, everything's in the green. That's what we're looking for. All right, so remote access is what we're looking for. Now the default is direct access or VPN RAS service. What we're looking for is routing, right? So I'm gonna add some features here for routing. And really what we're targeting is net. Okay, so we do not want VPN. Okay, so it's gonna auto these items in here. Uh, must need them to complete, so let's do that. Routing, we were targeting uh, net. Okay, next, default. Restart if needed. Yep, install. So let's let it go ahead and do it, complete its install. Okay, our installation is uh, complete. Okay, there's remote access. So let's go in there. Configuration required. Open the getting starting wizard is the next choice. Okay, so this is what we need to be careful about choosing the right one. All right, so we can go into it through the server dashboard, but we're not going to get what we're looking for. So let's go into routing and remote access. And now we can start setting it up. Okay, so right click on it, choose configure. We want to do network address translation only. We don't need VPN or dial up or anything like that. Just NAT is all we need. Okay. Use this public interface to connect to the internet. That's going to be the 80 network that we set up. Finish. Okay. And now we are pretty much ready to go. Let's just check our routes, see if there's any no static routes needed. There's no NAT going on right now. Okay. We're pretty much ready to test this out. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy over a test VM over here, like a Windows 10 box or something. We're going to point it to this server here and make sure that we can get out and get through it and get to the internet. All right, so I went ahead and installed a, another machine right here. I call it uh, MCP Restore. Um, but it looks like it's working well. It's using uh, DHCP, and we're getting that uh, 10 address right here, you can see. So let's go ahead and check it again.
and you can see it's picking up 10.50 which is great that's coming for our DHCP server and the gateway and we got a DNS server however uh, what I found is I'm able to uh, ping through it one right I can get to one that's good so I went that means I went from my 10 network all the way through my AD server all the way to the, the uh, gateway and got got there without a problem I also can get further than that I can go to which is an external DNS server and boom I can get that but if I try to ping yahoo.com as an example it can't figure it out okay so if I do an NS lookup Okay. Give it a second to do its job. You can see it's, it's timing out on the DNS server. So something with DNS is not quite right. So let's go take a look at it real quick. All right, so let's look at the server. We're gonna go into properties and look, look at forwarders. Okay, there's our problem. You can see it's trying to forward DNS. If it doesn't know yahoo.com it's going to forward it to something and it's going to look at these it's also supposed to use uh, root hints if forwarders aren't available so what we want to do is we want to get rid of these three right here so let's get rid of them here these are wrong and I don't know why they're there I assume it's something about doing the setup happened but we're going to remove those out okay apply okay let's go back to MCP restore Let's check it again. Clear out the DNS. Let's try it again. There it is. So now it's working. Clear as a bell. And you can see our icon change. We're getting to the internet. That's exactly what we're looking for. And let's see if it's going to get out to the internet, get to vmexplorer.com. Sure did. And it seems to be working fine. So, folks, uh, that about does it. Make that one last adjustment in your AD server right here. If you have those forwarders, um, you can just go ahead and clear those out. There's no reason for them. Um, if, you're if you're having DNS issues uh, internally and you can't figure that out, that's where a forwarder might come in handy. You might give it uh, like an external address, but the root hints uh, typically, uh, typically help out with that, right? So that's what I had for you today. I hope you enjoyed uh, this part, this part uh, going through getting uh, Active Directory server up and running and, and doing some validation, things of that nature. If you have any questions or comments, uh, leave them below. Thank you so much and have a great day.